So there are four main ways to texture in Blender, and each of them accomplish completely different things depending on your goals. Now some of these methods are great for things like game asset development, while others are great for things like rendering. Regardless of your specific goals, at least one of these texturing solutions will work for you, so let's hop right into it. And by the way, if you haven't yet grabbed our hard surface ebook, we'd highly recommend doing so. It's free and there's lots of awesome info in there to learn from. I'll link it in the description below. Okay, so texturing solution number one, the principled BSDF shader. Now I'm gonna go in order from the most common to the least common, so most of you probably know how the principled shader works. You select your model, you add a material, and boom, just like that, you can tweak and adjust your settings very easily. Now generally, in the principled BSDF shader, we only use three things. Color, roughness, and metallic. Sometimes you might use other stuff like clear coat or sheen, but to be honest, these really don't change things that much. Color, roughness, and metallic values are by far the most important in terms of visual effect. Now, color is simple. Choose your color and it will be applied to your model. Roughness is simple as well. The closer to zero, the more reflective, and the closer to one, the more rough. Metallic is either going to be zero or one. For metallic, there is no such thing as in between. You either have dielectric materials, non-metals, or you have fully metallic objects. You could technically use a value between 0 and 1 for artistic purposes, but just remember that in real life, that value wouldn't actually exist. I'd recommend keeping the slider on 1 to make it metallic, or 0 to make it dielectric, non-metallic. So that is the first texturing solution, and it is super simple. Next, we have Substance Painter, or Quixel Mixer if you prefer that. Now Substance is great because you have a lot more versatility and control over your textures, where they're placed, things like that. Now most game artists use Substance Painter to texture their models, and that is because it's super easy to use and is insanely powerful. The only downside of Substance Painter is you need to actually unwrap and optimize your mesh since you'll have to export it as an FBX or an OBJ file in order to use it in substance. Now unwrapping is a topic for another video but if you want some tutorials on UV unwrapping check out some of these videos here. We also have a game asset course available on blenderbros.com if you'd prefer something a bit more structured. Now Substance Painter is an amazing option and if you want a full rundown on how to use it, you can watch my game assets in Blender, a complete workflow video. It's around 3 hours long but shows you the entire process of texturing. Next we have material packs. Now material packs are nice because if your goal isn't to texture externally or use it in a game engine, then you can just slap on a material pack and call it a day. For example, if I use a material pack and drop it on my model, this removes the need for me to create procedural materials from scratch. And if you're anything like me, you probably hate nodes and want to stay as far away from them as possible. So the next best option is to simply grab a material pack that somebody already created. Now the one I use most of the time is called the Definitely EV Material System by Chip Walters. Although it says EV in the name, it works fine in cycles. You just select your model, select the material you'd like to use, and click on add material, and you're done. Now keep in mind that the difference between a principled BSDF material and the stuff from material packs like this is that material packs tend to have a much more realistic element. For example, on this aluminum material, you can see the surface imperfections, the scratches, and the bumps that make it look more realistic. If I try to create a similar material just using the principled BSDF shader, it wouldn't look as realistic. So this really boils down to your goals and style. Most of our style here at Blender Bros is pretty simple, and we use principled BSDF for most of our renders. And finally, this one is probably one of my favorite ways to texture because it can really make your renders look much more realistic. So here's the deal. If you're a concept artist and simply need a good looking render, then you'll have a lot more versatility using this solution. This means you can post process and have a lot more control 
control over how your render looks. Lots of concept designers, industrial designers, and people like this use this method. So all you need to do is add a material in Blender, render out your scene, and then you can do all of the texturing inside of Photoshop. Check out this image. Here's the before and here's the after. The before is a plain, basic render, basic model, and the latter is much more realistic looking with surface imperfections and scratches. The way you do this is super easy. First, render your scene in Blender. I'd also recommend rendering just your object with nothing behind it with a transparent option enabled so that way you have a cutout you can use in Photoshop. At this point, you can start the texturing process. One of my favorite ways to texture and post is by using a black and white texture map. You can probably find some packs on the internet and heck, you could probably use AI to generate some of your own packs, but I personally use the packs included with the add-on Smudger Pro. Now, all we need to do is overlay some textures, change the blend mode to screen to remove the black values, and now we're just left with the actual texture. I can use the cutout we rendered earlier to mask the selection, drop the opacity a bit on the texture, and just like that, we have a clean, beautiful looking texture overlaid onto our render. How cool is that? This is one of the most powerful ways to make a plain, boring render into something that looks realistic. I actually have a tutorial using this process that I recently uploaded, so if you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description. And that, my friends, is how you can texture using four different solutions. I use all of these in my workflow, and I'd recommend you do so as well. Really hope this video helped to give you some ideas for your next project, and if you have any questions or additional workflows that you use, leave a comment down below and let me know. And again, check out our hard surface ebook for Blender. It's free and contains a lot of awesome hard surface modeling tips and techniques for you to use. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.